My name is Chris Cutcliffe and I am moving into a new role as the Director of Continuous Improvement in the Oxford School District. I also serve the district as the head football coach. Uh, I am going into my 14th year uh, here at Oxford. Um, I spent 11 years teaching uh, algebra um, and coaching football. I have spent the last um, two plus years in, in an admin role. For me, when we first began uh, looking into continuous improvement at the district level, uh, and I first became exposed to some of these ideas through you know, some PD and uh, convocation uh, with our superintendent, um, a lot of it sounded uh, like, I guess sounded very familiar to me because that's kind of how my uh, mentality was, especially from a coaching aspect. Um, and that's, we did a lot of similar type work, maybe not as formal and maybe didn't call it some of the same things, but we were doing some of that work in our football program. And so it felt very comfortable to me and felt like something I wanted to definitely learn more about and, and jump into. And um, I'm thankful that I've had the opportunity to do that. So um, our partnership for me uh, personally, I've been working with Sue from Studer, uh, you know, for several months now. And that's been uh, definitely uh, an awesome experience for me. She's uh, very engaging and uh, has, has done a great job of, of kind of helping guide us along this journey. Uh, I've learned a lot from conversations with her. Uh, I've seen her model a lot of things that I've been able to put into practice and so uh, that partnership has been very valuable. For me, working with Sue and learning about and seeing Sue model at Plus Delta right, was a very um, engaging experience for me. Uh, it was very efficient. Uh, I saw how easily she was able to collect feedback on what we were doing in our session, uh, categorize it, and then make it actionable, which I thought was you know, the most beneficial part. And so uh, since being exposed to that idea, I've been able to implement uh, that same strategy in, in several different areas and have seen uh, the same impact. And, it's, uh, and so it's been a very useful tool uh, and definitely one I'm thankful that Sue exposed me to. So we have definitely seen an increase in employee engagement over the last several years. And I think there have been a lot of contributing factors. I think maybe first and foremost uh, has been measuring employee engagement, right? And so, uh, you know, that that is measured typically tends to improve, right? Measure what matters. And so I think we've done a great job of measuring it consistently, having meanif meaningful conversations uh, throughout the district and all the different departments, different school buildings, uh, and at the district level. And so I think engaging in those conversations uh, getting feedback from employees uh, and then and then responding to that feedback right so I think that's what uh, has improved engagement as people feel more comfortable giving feedback but then they also see action based on their feedback and so they know that they're being heard uh, and that their voice does matter in this work and, and that everybody has a voice in the process and so I think that has really led to an increase in engagement I think one of the really unique things about our community and about our school district is how quickly we're growing and so if you aren't very strategic in that process, you have growing pains. And we're going to have growing pains along the way, but I think um, intentionally implementing improvement science into our work and continuous improvement methodology into our work has helped us anticipate some of those problems, to hear those problems early on uh, in this growth process and, and anticipate uh, what we need to do next and try to stay out in front of that growth and really be strategic in how we plan. And so I think uh, I think this work has really allowed us to, to see those problems, uh, potential problems, before they exist as we're growing so rapidly uh, and to better serve our families and our, and our students and our employees um, you know, as we kind of deal with this rapid growth that we're doing, which is a great thing, uh, but it can be a bad thing if we're not prepared for it. Growth in the district has been exploding uh, in recent years and is projected to continue, and I think uh, it's, it's evident that we as a district are doing a great job of serving our community. Uh, we serve our families well, we serve our students well. Uh, I kind of have a unique uh, perspective, I think, because I've been a student in this district. I have uh, my, f I have six sons. My fifth son will start uh, pre-K next year. So next year I'll have five children in the district. I've served the district as a teacher, uh, as a coach, as an administrator. So I've seen it from a lot of different perspectives. And so I think the, the work we do serving our community is evident uh, in the population growth and I think people are excited to bring their families here and have their children be a part of our district. I think alignment is incredibly important in a school district and I think it's that is somewhere that we're still growing and still learning and still working. Um, when we began our scorecard process I think it probably was a little bit segmented but we were doing the work you know we were starting where we stand we were jumping y'all in 
uh, and getting going with it. I think we uh, are in a much better place now of moving towards great alignment throughout the district. We're uh, in the process of developing our new strategic plan uh, and that uh, naturally gives alignment to the district. You know, the district scorecard will align with the strategic plan. Each school's scorecard, each department's score, uh, scorecard will align with the district scorecard. And so we're able to create alignment uh, working down to the PLC level, to the teacher level, and ultimately to the student level. Uh, and students being able to articulate what their goals are, uh, which are ultimately helping us achieve our district goals and our district scorecard. So I think that type of alignment uh, from you know, from the strategic plan down to the classroom and the student level is going to be uh, really fun to watch that come into place. I think alignment is crucial. We have seven schools in our district um, and, and we have two, two grades per school at the elementary levels working up to our high school which has four grades. So we have seven schools uh, but everybody moves, all of our students move through all seven schools. And so uh, when, you, when you operate that way it is really important that all seven schools have some alignment. Um, you know, everybody, there will be differences building to building to some extent, but a student who's with us from pre-K through graduation is going to go through seven different buildings. And so uh, we've always been a really successful district. We've always um, had very successful schools, but we don't need to have seven uh, distinctly different schools. We need some alignment on the most important things from building to building to better serve our families and our students. So there's some consistency from building to building. So I think that it is very important, um, especially in a central office administrative role where we have you know, maybe a little bit less direct contact with students to always keep in mind that the work that we're doing is geared towards student outcomes, right? And we, that's what we want to see is a more positive outcome for all of our students in the Oxford School District. And so I think keeping that in mind, keeping the data on the table and looking at how our students are doing frequently and keeping that uh, at the forefront of the decisions that we're making taking the time to go out and have conversations with students and or teachers and families and parents and taking that survey data seriously um, and, and really trying to keep that at the forefront of our minds because it's you, what you don't want to do is get into a situation where you're disconnected from the people that we're supposed to be serving so uh, I think it's very important to keep student outcomes at the front and center of our work um, and like I said to do that I think we have to keep the data on the table uh, but I also think we have to um, maybe get out and, and have some conversations with people and get feedback, um, empathy interviews or something you know, that we've talked about and used. Um, and so doing that work to keep, those, to, keep those, to keep the students at the focus of our work, I think that's really, really important. Um, I think leader rounding has had a tremendous impact on the district. Um, I know for me, rounding with my supervisor, it is taking the, it's really about setting aside the time and designating specific time uh, to have this meaningful conversation, right? And to talk about barriers in the work, talk about what's going really well in the work, and then know that together we're working towards solutions to those things. I think that's been really, really beneficial for me. Um, I know that recently we did a plus delta uh, with our curriculum department. And the first thing that ever, on every group, that the first thing that was mentioned for something that's going well was rounding. Uh, it was consistent in every small group in the room. And so I thought that was a pretty, uh, pretty cool evidence of how effective that practice is. Um, you know, I, I certainly have seen uh, in people that I supervise, I've seen the benefit of doing the rounding. I think taking the time, um, because we're all busy, right? So taking the time to with your body language, with your calendar, with everything that you're doing to look at somebody, sit down and let them know, hey, uh, you, what you're doing right now is important to me. I'm taking this time to, to have this conversation to hear you uh, because what your thoughts are do matter you know, and people hear heard in that kind of way and they feel valued in their work. Um, and so I think that definitely improves um, employee engagement, improves the culture of the district uh, and I think it's made a huge impact here. Our superintendent, Mr. Robertson, has done an outstanding job about being intentional in leadership development. Uh, I think he's made it a priority in the district to not only uh, attract great leaders, um, he does a great job of identifying great leaders throughout the state uh, and going and trying to recruit them to come to our district when we have an opening, but also about developing great leaders within our district and giving opportunities for advancement within the district and recognizing people's strengths. Um, I think he's also done an incredible job of building a team with diverse strengths around him. And I think uh, he has great awareness of what his strengths are uh, and, and maybe what his weaknesses are and where he needs somebody else that complements that, right? And I think he's done a great job of building a team that really works as a team. Uh, one of the things he'll talk about is not, we're not just trying to accumulate talent, we're trying to build a team. 
And so identifying who works well together, uh, whose strengths complement someone else's strengths, and really looking at it from that aspect and of trying to build a team uh, that's all pointed in the same direction, you know, which is going to help us with our alignment district-wide. I think he's been incredible at, at doing that uh, and, and, again, has been very intentional about it, and I think that's been the most important part. I like to tell people that continuous improvement is not rocket science. It's mostly common sense. It's just really good practice, and it's a... Uh, uh, continuous improvement methodologies are just a formal process uh, to ways that really we all should be thinking about our work uh, anyways and, and probably are thinking about our work uh, but now we're able to uh, give to, to put a process in place that we can all communicate on this in the same language we can share great ideas with other people uh, through this work uh, if we have something that's that's very effective in our area we can share it with someone else uh, and so I think um, that it's not an overwhelming, um, you know, big, ugly thing that you have to add into your day. Uh, it's common sense, really good practice, uh, and it's tools that, that will make you better and more efficient at what you're doing. I think it is possible for a, you know, small pocket here or there, a, a teacher that has gone and studied this methodology maybe to pull that off on a very small scale, uh, but to have any type of large-scale growth uh, I think alignment throughout the district uh, in terms of continuous improvement is necessary. Uh, and I think modeling that, uh, that work from our superintendent down to our student level uh, is very important. And I think uh, whether we're having a cabinet meeting, whether we're having uh, a curriculum department meeting, whether it's a meeting with instructional coaches or a PLC or an instructional meeting with principals or a classroom teacher working with students, I think incorporating those same methodologies uh, number one, I think it makes people more comfortable to go uh, and implement these practices themselves when they're participating in a group that is implementing these practices. And so I think that's really important. But I think just the consistency and vocabulary and in language and an expectation, uh, especially in a district where students are moving um, through seven schools before graduation, I think that consistency that we can provide to students and families is really valuable. So I think starting small uh, with our classroom improvement work was a wise decision. I think we uh, started with a group of teachers who were going to be early adopters, who were going to uh, be excited about the work um, and, and be willing to be vulnerable about their experiences with the work, share successes, share failures. Um, and, and I think uh, starting with that small group is going to allow that group to grow kind of organically. Uh, and those teachers are going to be able to go share successes uh, with their peers. Uh, we're already seeing other teachers asking about the work, wanting to jump in and begin. Uh, and so uh, I, I really do think that starting small uh, was, was a wise decision. We're able to celebrate those victories um, you know, in, in a small setting. Uh, and so watching it kind of organically grow as we move towards a full implementation has been pretty exciting to see. I think that it is very important to somebody who is wanting to begin this work um, to be a system thinker and to not look at their small piece of the puzzle. Everybody's little piece of the puzzle is very important. Um, but if you only focus on that, we're, we're never going to get very far together. And so I think encouraging people to be system thinkers uh, and think outside the box a little bit and be willing to step outside of their you know, small sphere of influence and, and try to make, help make decisions on what's best for the whole organization, I think that is crucial to this work.